What's going on guys, it's Firefly, and today's video is all about gears, gearboxes, and differential lock. We're going to be talking about all the gears your gearbox can have and the best ways to use them, how to choose between different gearboxes for each truck, and diff lock, both what it does and how it should be used. I know that for a lot of players, this is an area of the game where they see a lot of ambiguity, so I thought it might help to make a video where I share all the knowledge and practical tips I have about this topic. I'll begin by talking about each one of the gears that a gearbox can have. To start things off, the most important gear and the gear that we all spend the most time in is of course the auto gear. Auto is actually not one gear, it contains a range of gears that your truck automatically shifts between when certain conditions are met. I'm actually not going to go into detail about what those conditions are, but I will say that this transmission system often prevents you from gaining speed as quickly as you can, and when you're losing speed, it also prevents you from preserving as much speed as you can. You can solve both problems by frequently using a technique I call the quick shift. A quick shift is when you are in auto and you press on your clutch pedal keybind and release it immediately without shifting out of auto. All you need to do is tap that button once. When you're driving on easy terrain and you think your truck is gaining speed at a slower rate than it should because it's taking its time to slowly step through a bunch of gears, you can perform a quick shift to immediately jump it into a much higher gear, which will allow it to gain speed much faster. On the other hand, when you're leaving the easier terrain with the speed you gained on it, and entering terrain that's just barely too difficult for your truck to sustain in the current gear, such as an incline or some light mud, you can also perform a quick shift to downshift your truck into the highest gear it can sustain. If you don't do this, your truck will actually refuse to downshift until the engine has almost stalled and the truck has almost stopped moving. And then it will shift you all the way down into first gear and slowly step back up to the highest gear it can sustain under the new road conditions. This makes you lose an unnecessarily large amount of momentum. Quick shifting is also useful when you're driving through an area where the conditions are changing constantly, such as a road segment that alternates between dirt and mud every few meters. In this case, you can spam the clutch pedal key to constantly quick shift into the most appropriate gear for different road conditions. In most cases where this happens, driving in high gear will probably work better than spamming quick shift. We're going to talk about high gear later, but keep in mind that quick shifting is still useful for these rapidly changing or alternating conditions. If you are just starting your save file and has yet to unlock a gearbox that has the high gear. Overall, quick shifting is super cool. If you learn to use it correctly, it could massively speed up the pace of your gameplay, especially during the early game before most of your truck have the mighty high gear. If you've been playing SnowRunner for even over 10 hours, you've probably already figured out how to quickshift naturally, in which case, good for you. But if you're someone who doesn't already know about quickshifting, and you're going to learn one thing from this video, please let it be that one, because it will help you more than anything else. Now that I've talked enough about the auto gear and quickshifting, let's talk about the low gears. I say gears with an S plural because a gearbox can have multiple low gears or even a continuous slider. More on that later. You shift into a low gear when you want to go slow or when you want to turn on diff lock on trucks that have engageable diff lock. Engageable diff lock is the type that you can turn on and off using your diff lock keybind and you can only do this in your low gears or manual reverse gear. This is in stark contrast from always on diff lock, which remains active at all times. Since allowing engageable diff lock to be turned on is the most important function of the low gears, I want to take some time to show you what exactly diff lock does and how to use it effectively. So diff lock forces all wheels to rotate at the same speed, which allows you to utilize your engine power more efficiently when you're driving on uneven surfaces or any other surface that puts uneven resistance on the different wheels on your truck. Take a look at this Dairy Longhorn here. I'm in low minus, but diff lock is currently off. If I press on the accelerator, as you can see, the truck doesn't move. It's trying, but it's failing. These wheels are spinning because they take very little power to spin since they have no friction under them. However, if they have no friction under them, then spinning them is also a waste of power because it will not move the truck. 
the wheels that will move the truck are not spinning because they're not receiving enough power. The moment I turn diff lock on, you can see that the wheels which were not spinning are now spinning and the truck starts moving. This is because when diff lock forces all wheels to spin at the same speed, it takes the engine power wasted on spinning the wheels with low traction and redirects it to the wheels that are actually touching something solid. This is what I meant by utilizing engine power more efficiently. If you're driving a truck that has engageable diff lock, feel free to shift into your low gears and turn it on whenever you're going super slow, such as when you're going through deep mud, or need to maintain really good control of your truck, such as when you're climbing rocks. I personally find myself spending a lot of time in low plus whenever I drive a truck with engageable diff lock because in a lot of places these trucks struggle to go faster in auto or high anyways because the lack of diff lock in those gears prevents them from getting grip. Moving on from the low gears, let's talk about the high gear. The high gear is an alternative to quick shifting as a way to gain speed quickly or to preserve speed on uneven terrain. The high gear's value mainly comes from the fact that it's a fast gear that's also actually just one gear, which means that on uneven terrain you don't need to constantly quick shift in order to fight the undesirable shifting behavior you get when you're driving in auto. This is really good because quick shifting doesn't actually completely eliminate the inefficiency of auto. It does mitigate it, but there is actually room for things to get even better, and the high gear is exactly that. The downside to driving in high is that you must make sure that your speed does not fall too low, otherwise your engine will stall and turn off. If you are in high gear and you do slow down suddenly because you hit something, or because you're going through a ditch, you can temporarily shift into auto or low plus to gain back some speed and then shift back into high. Overall, I think the high gear is super useful, but the reason for that may not be immediately obvious to a lot of players. I could say more, but I find that the purpose of this gear is inherently really difficult to explain, so it's probably easier for you to figure out the rest yourself by shifting into high more frequently and seeing the effect in different situations in order to learn exactly what it does and what are the best situations to use it. Moving on to the manual reverse gear, this gear is actually very simple. It works the same as when you hold your brake slash reverse keybind while in auto to activate auto reverse. They both make you go backwards and the speed is the same. However, manual reverse does have one advantage and that is it allows you to turn on engageable diff lock, which again improves your ability to move on uneven or soft terrain. And to wrap things up, the neutral gear. It's basically useless. It's only useful for revving your engine to hear the cool sound, for testing your truck's fuel consumption at max revs, and for you to accidentally shift into. Now that we've talked about all the gears, let's talk about how to choose the best gearbox for each truck. It wouldn't be my video if I didn't find some reason to break out a spreadsheet, so here we are. There are lots of gearboxes in SnowRunner, but if you look closely, you will realize that most of the gearboxes in the game have features that puts them under one of three standards. And then there's the exception. I'm gonna call the three standards the default gearbox, the three low gearbox, and the fast gearbox. We also have three gearbox sets. The set that a truck uses determines what gearboxes it can equip. For example, the Scout 800 uses the Scout set, so it will have access to the stock gearbox, the SnowRunner gearbox, and the freeway gearbox. We'll talk about the fine tune later. The White Western Star uses the truck set, so it'll have access to the balance gearbox, the off-road gearbox, and the high range gearbox, and so on. But the relationship between the different gearboxes in the same set are very similar. The first one comes stock with the truck, the second one has slightly fewer gears under auto, which means lower top speed, but in exchange offers three low gears and the high gear, and the third one has a faster high gear and an auto gear containing more gears you will ever need and a dangerously high top speed, especially the high range gearbox. So how do you choose the best gearbox for your truck? Well, if your truck has engageable diff lock, you want the three low gearbox, so you can have low plus and drive faster with diff lock on. This would be the SnowRunner gearbox for the Scout set and the off-road gearbox for the truck set. Yes, the three low gearbox does have a lower fuel consumption rating in the menus. Ignore this, it doesn't really mean what you think. If your truck has always on diff lock, you want the fast gearbox because it allows you to go, well, faster. 
This would be the freeway gearbox for the Scout set and the high range gearbox for the truck set. You don't really need the three low gearbox because the extra low gears have next to no value on trucks with always on diff lock since the diff lock remains in effect in all gears. The fast gearbox on the other hand is much faster in high and auto. The faster high gear is especially useful as it allows your truck to drive at maximum speed on a wide range of terrain types without shifting, which lets you move through medium difficulty terrain much faster. And at last but not least, even if you don't care about speed, the fact that the fast gearbox allows you to reach and maintain higher speeds has implications on fuel efficiency. And unlike most places where fuel efficiency pops up as a factor, this time the effect is actually substantial. Now, the special set is kind of weird. Trucks that have access to this set are mostly bulky trucks that go steady but slow. You'll notice that I merged the two rows here because the advanced special gearbox actually has both the three low gears and the fastest high and auto gear. So it's both the three low and the fast gearbox in this set, which makes it the best choice for any truck that has this set, regardless of which type of diff lock they have. In fact, the advanced special gearbox is one of the most valuable collectible items in the entire game because it's the fast gearbox for a lot of trucks that are great in every other way but could really use more speed since they come with a regular special gearbox which is really really slow. The best example of this is probably the Azov 64131 which is available at the very beginning of the game but the advanced special gearbox isn't. And I really think that this is partly why everybody remembers the A6 to be as slow as they do. Other famous steady but slow trucks that use the special gearbox set including the Kolob Twins, the Pacific P12 and P16, and the Tuz 420 Tatran. Those also get a much needed speed boost from the advanced special. You can find the advanced special gearbox in Pedro Bay, Alaska, over here just outside of the coverage of the washtower, as in even if you open the washtower, it will not be marked on the map. You either need to stumble upon it or just know where it is. Now, if you are still on your first playthrough, I, in general, don't recommend jumping around maps to rush upgrades because it does spoil the game slightly. I strongly recommend playing through the regions in order from left to right at least once. I did this on my first playthrough, and I think it really is the, quote, full SnowRunner experience. However, if you feel that organically moving forward is too hard, and you've already decided that you want to rush the good stuff, then the advanced special gearbox must be on your list, simply because it's the best gearbox for too many good trucks. For example, if you're going to rush the Tuz 420 Tatran, or, God forbid, the Zix 605R, both are common targets for rushing and they both use the special gearbox set, so the advanced special helps them too. That's pretty much it when it comes to the standard gearboxes, so let's talk about the weird ones. I'm gonna start with the fine-tuned gearboxes. Again, notice I said gearboxes, plural, and that's because there are actually three fine-tuned gearboxes, one for each gearbox set. They all have the same name in the menus, but there are actually three different upgrades you need to discover. All three of them are in Wisconsin. When it comes to function, every fine-tuned gearbox is nearly identical to the three low gearbox in their set, except for the main difference that they have a continuous slider for the low gears and manual reverse gear. I find this slider thing to be a cool concept, but ultimately quite impractical in the context of SnowRunner, since there just aren't many places on the map where you can benefit from this level of precision. And, depending on what input device you use to play the game, the slider feature can sometimes actually be a disadvantage because it prevents you from moving in and out of your low gears and manual reverse gear quickly. In my personal experience, this lack of responsiveness gets in my way more often than the precision actually helps me, which is why I'm reluctant to recommend these fine-tuned gearboxes. Moving on, the multi-purpose gearbox is a weird gearbox that's only available on some trucks with the special set. It has a much faster auto gear than the advanced special, Yes, both of them only have 5 gears under auto, but the 5th gear on the multi-purpose is much faster, which gives your truck a higher road speed. The trade-off here is that you will suffer the moment you go off-road 
because you are missing the low plus, low minus, and high gear, which is a huge compromise. I would say that this gearbox is even worse than the fine-tuned gearboxes because it's simply not worth it to give up three of your precious manual gears for extra road speed. It just doesn't make any sense since any time you save on the road is all going to get taken back the moment you enter somewhere rough, which you basically will on every route in SnowRunner. So the multi-purpose gearbox is also something that I recommend staying away from. The archaic gearbox is a scout gearbox that is only available to the Don 71 and Tuz 166. You guys can see the gears here, it's pretty bad. I won't use it, and frankly hardly anyone uses the Dawn or Tuz 166 anyways, so it's not even that important. Lastly, we have the Custom and Special Off-Road Gearbox. They are actually pretty good, but that's not really as helpful to know since on trucks that have them, you cannot swap them out for something else anyways. The Custom is the only gearbox for the F750. It's got all the manual gears and a decently fast 6-speed auto gear. The Special Off-Road is the only gearbox for the Freightliner M916A1 and the Voron D. It's almost exactly the same as the regular off-road gearbox, but comes stock with the truck, which means you don't need to unlock the off-road gearbox in order to have those precious manual gears. This is also why the Voron D is an extremely powerful starter truck. You can buy it immediately at the start of the game at level 1, and it comes stock with all the useful gears. That's it for this video guys, I hope you learned something useful, if you did, please press the like button button on this video. It only takes a split second for you, but it will help me out tremendously. You can also subscribe to the channel for more SnowRunner content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you a fantastic day.